Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us with a Masterius Meet the Mentor with a new uh, mentor to Masterius, Vandy Massey. Uh, Vandy is an English painter um, who is in the UK, but her start was in South Africa, and it is so exciting to me to see the influence of that experience and time in her past. That is so predominant in her art and makes it so vibrant and colorful and moving. And um, it's her landscapes and uh, her landscapes and florals and abstractions are so powerful with uh, the mediums that she works in. And uh, she finds the, uh, the fluidity and the liberating essence of watercolor, and I love that expression, captivating to work with. And <laughs> for me, when I was first starting out, that was a little frustrating. I think Vandy can help me out with that in the mentorship group. Um, so Vandy has chaired the Society of East Anglican Watercolorists. Hello, Carla. Thanks for joining us. Um, for four years, and she strengthened the society's links with the Royal Watercolor Society and the Royal Institute for Painters in Watercolors. Vandy teaches popular workshops in experimental watercolors, landscapes, and, fl and flowers in loose watercolor. Uh, in her career, and I admire this so much, Vandy has sought out tutors who have um, reached a level of excellence in their field, and she believes that we are never too experienced to learn something new. And <clears throat> uh, Vandy's work has been selected for national level exhibitions in the UK, and she has many private collectors all across the globe. So um, I would like to start off with a, a question for you, Vandy, that I is, uh, what well, I would, we, what inspired your, um, your pursuit of a career in art? And we'll start there this morning. Wow. Okay. So that's a big one. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thank, thanks so much for coming and, and joining us for this chat. Um, so I started out in business um, and have I'd worked for many years as an accountant and had this idea that I, I, you know, if you could do numbers, you couldn't be creative. It was like, but it was binary. Um, and, you know, I have a sister who is a graphic designer, a book illustrator, and went to art college. And I was so envious because I thought, well, that just looked like so much fun. And I'm working with columns of numbers. And then one day I just thought, I looked at my life and thought, actually, I am doing quite a lot of creative stuff. I'm creative in the garden and I'd done some ceramics and I'd done various things that were all creative. And I thought, well, there's no reason to think I couldn't try painting as well. So I went off to go and have a try and I loved it. I loved it so much I couldn't stop. So I just kept going. So that's basically what did it. And I think there's another element of it, which for me was, was kind of why I wanted to paint which is that my husband takes photographs and he's always been a keen photographer. And when we left South Africa, there was a sort of element of the feeling of being out in the bush, feeling of being having those open spaces and the light that I wanted to capture. And I thought, I need to do this in a different medium because if I wanted to make it perfect, I would take a photograph. I want to interpret it and put my own feelings into the work and that was the thing for me about painting that painting allowed me to get into the how does this feel by using artist license license and just you know you can edit what you see whereas the camera yes you can do digital editing but for me the process the process is the thing that is so fascinating watching that paint develop on the paper seeing it move it's it's magical 
Oh, wonderful. Uh, that's exciting to me. Um, what we're, we're talking about mentorship this morning and uh, I have my own personal experience with mentorship uh, and it has been uh, just so wonderful in my art journey. And I'm wondering, how would you, Vandy, how would you describe the type of person, uh, the type of artist, emerging artist that would be joining your mentorship group in April? What would be their characteristics, if you will? I think it. I think the group will be good for people who've sort of made some progress um, in their work and are sort of at the point where they want to start perhaps exhibiting and selling their work. Um, there's, I think everybody's different. And I think that's the power of mentorship as opposed to going and doing a workshop. Both are valuable, but they provide different things, um, different connections and different ways of learning. Because I think the thing about mentorship is I look forward to working with individual artists within the group. And I think that's the beauty of small group um, interactions is that you can talk about what everybody's aspirations are. So I think this is a group that will want to develop that are happy to do be a bit experimental. So the artists who come along will be people who quite like the idea of experimenting, pushing some boundaries gently without it being way too, too far. Um, and um, also developing perhaps some some ideas about where they want their work to go in terms of a business context, because I'm very happy to cover things like marketing and um, exhibiting, so uh, open studios and things like that, because I've done loads of those. So those I can bring that to to the mentorship as well. So I think we we have two two strands, two areas that we can work on together. And depending on what the group dynamic is and what everybody wants, we can decide which element we tackle at which stages in the, in the process. So that's where I think it, this group will be valuable, particularly for people who want to be a little bit more experimental and share their results. I have um, a group of artist friends. In fact, I have a few groups of artist friends where we actually get together and we do things. I, I just wrote a blog post about one last week. We go and do... Um, we've done an artist re retreat in January where three of us went off together. We all paint in different mediums, but the value, the value that we got out of that was amazing because we all decided ahead of time what we wanted to get out of it. So in a sense, we were doing peer group mentoring. Mm -hmm. and We were able to discuss what we wanted to get out of it and support each other and share knowledge. And so I've always believed that peer group learning, mentorship, being able to actually have somebody reflect back to you what you're doing and ask the questions, those valuable questions that make you really think about the process and where you want to go with it. It's an incredibly powerful way of learning. It, it certainly is. And um, the, the, so that it's, I'm so glad that you mentioned that you know, you're you're in this group of of um, of yours where people have different mediums that they're working on, and the exciting thing about the Mastery's mentorship group is that okay, I am a watercolor art artist, but I do work in acrylics, and I am very interested in um, multimedia, and. From looking at your work, Vandy, and your website and Instagram, I can see that my interest in those things will be a part of the mentorship group. So it's it's that um, you don't have to just work in watercolor to uh, be a to have a very valuable experience in this mentorship group with you. That's my read. Is that accurate? Yes, I think probably it'll be it will be less useful for people who are working in oils or pastel or things like that because the technical side of that is not an area that I would be covering um, because yes. my strength and my experience is in watercolor, water-based media, and then adding in some bits of collage and some line work in different um, mediums. So 
I think that's that that's the sweet spot is water based media and a little bit of mixed media. So I use sure. inks in my work. I use um, things that I don't know whether you get these in the states. There's a thing called a woody, which is like a chunky water based pencil, slightly waxy quality, and you get really great lines with those. So I'm always looking for things that'll make good lines, and you know I've got a range of those sorts of things that I add in. Um, and so that's the kind of uh, medium that I think will be useful for. So that the only area I would say isn't isn't particularly um, going to be useful. The mental group won't be useful for are things like oils, um, pastels. But yeah, but I don't mean pastels just for lines, but I mean doing entire works in pastels and photography. But anything that's water based, because there are universals. You know, color theory is universal. Um, tonal values, all of the things that you bring into uh, creating a piece of work. And also the um, psychological side of it, the confidence building, the what, where do you want to go with this? All of those conversations are hugely valuable because I think if you don't have that part of it, um, if you if you aren't able to have those conversations about that part of it, then it's a purely technical process. And I think people who've reached the emerging artist stage are at that point where they're actually examining what they are learning about themselves at the same time as the, the, the technical side. Well, thank you, Vandy. Enjoying the video? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when new Masteries videos are added. Um, we've had some members of the Masteries community join us, and I want to welcome all of you, and thank you for having your morning coffee with us. Hello, Sue and everyone. Um, I, I Hi. please, if you have questions, you want to um, ask Vandy anything about the mentorship and her experience, please jump in and do that. We want to be very interactive. Um, so one thing that you and I had talked about uh, in a previous conversation, Vandy, was helping artists to get past those um those artist blocks, those things that prevent us from really embracing the creative process and, and busting through that. And what are some examples of how you personally have done that for yourself and what you've taught others, other artists to do? So I think the thing with artist block, there's an interesting part of that, which is that we all experience it to some degree. And some of us experience it more than once, um, yeah. you know, and come up from time to time. Uh, I think a lot of people feel that there's something wrong when it happens and that creates some stress and stress and tension in their practice. Um, we also, I know we, we know that other people experience it, but when we're going through it, it's really difficult and we get stuck. And, and the more we focus on how stuck we are, the worse it gets. So I've kind of developed processes within my practice. Part, I mean, it, some of it is my experimental work and, and loosening up. Um, and they actually work quite well as well for breaking artist block. So there's a range of things you can do. Um, so what we do is, what I tend to do is I break it down. I break it down into its component parts and say, right, so there are there are things that you can try. And depending on whether you know what's blocking you or not, some things will work better than others. And loose watercolor um, exercises and techniques often are very helpful in getting things moving again because you've got to just take away the, the, the need to do things very precisely. And I've got a whole list of, of, of things that I do, um, things I develop. I've got sketchbooks I work in. I have particular things that go in those sketchbooks. And I know that if I come into the studio and I just go, well, I have no idea what to paint. I've got those things I can fall back on that I can actually get stuck into. And that then actually gets me into back into the flow. Because I think the thing about painting is we all love that phase where you get into the flow and time disappears and you know, before you know it, you've actually been doing it for a couple of hours and loving every moment. And 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 there's, you know, an image that's emerged in front of you where a few hours before there was nothing there. And that's magical. So being able to sort of get back into that flow. So there are lots of different things that we can do, but the ones that are particular in the studio are very um, are linked to things like the um, loosening up 
And, and that's the thing that I've been kind of, that I, I'm known for in my work is loose watercolors. I don't do tight, hyper-realistic watercolor painting. For me, it's all about getting that emotion out onto the page. And, you know, a lot of that is just loosening up. Um, mm. I, I've had conversations with people who've had a lot of training. And in some ways, it's that spontaneity that they want to get. They want to capture that spontaneous moment where you just kind of, it happens and you see that paint flowing across the page. And mm -hmm. the loosening up can be remarkably challenging for some artists who, who are naturally quite precise. So it seems counterintuitive to basically just sort of let it all go and, and, and let the paint do its own thing. But the thing about watercolor and the thing that helps with things like breaking out, breaking down your block and getting moving again is the fact that watercolor is quite an, un, what they used to call it, the unruly medium. It does its own thing. And there's this push and pull. It's like a little dance between the artist and the paint, I feel. So you're kind of going, well, it wants to go in this direction. It wants to do that. I have to work out how to control it, but also not so much that it is it loses its energy and its life. And the thing for watercolor and water-based media is it does have a life. The water is the important thing. The water is what gives it life. And so if we look at those techniques and we break those down, we can find ways in which actually using um, loose watercolor and loose water-based media techniques will help us actually get back into that flow again when we're feeling stuck. And it's that flow. And it sounds like... Um, that lends itself to uh, abstraction, if yes. you will. And yeah. Can you speak to that, please? Yeah, with pleasure. I mean, I, I think I, I started my watercolor, um, my painting career, uh, trying to paint, not totally realistically, but figuratively. So there was an element of, you know, I want to paint a tree, I want to paint a landscape, and I've done a lot of that. I want to paint this flower, and I still do that. But I think what's fascinated me more and more, the more I work with with um, art materials and, and in this field, is um, you break it down into line and shape and start to understand what line and shape really lights you up and everybody's different. And so being able to then start to look at that emotional content and translate it into something that is more abstract, that is is a fascinating process it's um i found it much more difficult to get into my abstractions than i did to get into figurative work it took me longer because the thing with the figurative piece is you've got something standing in front of you you have a reference right there or a picture or whatever it is you're working directly from a reference so you can always go back to that reference that's your point where you that's your starting point and every time you pick up the brush and do another brush stroke or another line you're referring back to that image the thing about abstraction is that you don't have, it's all in your head. You are bringing it out. You might start with an image, but from there you need to take it somewhere else if you're wanting to do abstraction. And there are processes that you can follow to help you get into that. Processes that help you, there are many different ways of getting in, into abstraction. And some of them start with something figurative. So you might start with, you know, a flower and a vase and have that as your initial shape. And then you work from there and push it and push it and push it until you get to where you you find that you've got an exciting abstraction. And the element of material um, use that comes into that is understanding how your materials interact. So understanding how watercolor and ink interact because they have different qualities when they're on the paper, they do different things and they look and feel different. So when you want to achieve a particular look, you might go, well, that needs a piece of, of collage and this needs some acrylic and this needs some watercolor or whatever, you know, whatever your mediums are, you, you, you know, you get to a point where with your experimenting, you know which quality so if you want translucence you're going to go with watercolor if you want a nice solid block of color you're going to go with acrylic or gouache so or a piece of collage so it's it's understanding all of those material characteristics 
and how you want to put them together. And that takes a lot of time. It's those 10,000 hours, isn't it? The more you do it, the more, and the beauty of painting is those 10,000 hours are just fun. They're fantastic. You know, they, they give you so much joy in the process and the more you do it, um, you know, I used to get frustrated when I first started painting because I felt like I, you know, I, when you come out of a business um, and particularly an accounting environment, it's all about getting results. It's like, you know, you've got this column of numbers and you add them up and you've got a result at the end and it's quick, you know, or, you know, you, you know what the end result is and you know how to get to it within the, mo with the most efficiency. But when you're painting, it's not about efficiency. It's about getting into the process and enjoying it and painting for yourself. But ultimately, you want other people to enjoy what you've done so that you can get it out into the world in an exhibition or on somebody's wall at home. That process, yes. Uh, what what do you do? And I love asking my artist friends this and my, my masters who I um, have the privilege of working with. What are some fun or quirky things that you do to get that creativity um, going? For you when you go into the studio so um it changed over the years when I first started painting I did a lot of color studies so I would use um sketchbooks and they're on the other side of the studio so I can't reach them at the moment otherwise I would show you I would um take my watercolors and actually I have a, a, a beautiful big um, sketchbook and I would do color studies where I would work out the characteristics of each paint you know and and the pigment color I got really nerdy about it and I should really continue and finish the book but I haven't because I got interested in other things and I decided to let myself do that because that's okay because there's no rules about how you how you do these things but I would literally look at the transparency the whether it was single pigment or or multi-pigment um, and, you know, the different range of colors and all of those sorts of things. So I had little blocks and then I would actually paint something in the sketchbook that had that, um, that used those colors. So it actually has turned into a really lovely reference and people who come to my open studios like to have a look at that. Um, and so from color studies, I then started doing, in fact, quite recently, probably, I think I wrote about it earlier this year I have always been interested somehow my work seems to have a slightly eastern feel to it um, I think it's because of the flow and because I like organic line as opposed to very um, tight structured you know I, I, I don't use lots of straight lines in my work it's usually quite a wobbly line because I like those sort of organic feelings it's a bit like you know when you look into the garden and you've got the lines of of um, branches and things they're never exactly straight um, and so I've always been interested in that um, process of of eastern um, art although I'm not an expert but I did discover a thing called an Enso which I started doing at the beginning of my work and I that is just so interesting because it's a quick process it only takes seconds but somehow it's that you I mean and the the principle behind it the theory behind it is that it's all about completeness and um you can have a look online it's a it's a I think I've got a couple of videos on my on my Instagram feed as well you literally take a brush and you do a single circle with your brush but the process mm -hmm. sounds really simple it's actually because you have to slow down you have to stop and take a breath and then do your line and it has to be in one continuous line you can't lift the brush so it's a lovely discipline it's a process and I think I did um I did a whole I've done two sketchbooks um full of them where and and then I paused for a while and, and now I sort of do other line and I know that I, from time to time I will go back to doing those because I think they are a lovely literally you know a couple of seconds process that I find when I walk into the studio it's a it's a focus thing um so it's um doesn't take long it's very quick it's, um you know once you've started the process it's something that you can do every day and it's just like 
that's done now but it's the preparation for it it's the slowing down and it's the focusing very carefully on what's happening on the page and you get some wonderful marks and that's the thing I think is really interesting and that's led me into some other mark making exercises that I do when I come into the studio so um, it's it's just getting my head out of the daily rush and practicality of you know everyday lists of things to do the grocery shopping the you know the chores the errands all the rest of it and I find that actually I need that sort of gap it's almost um, like a buffer when I get into the studio and I've learn to make it much quicker I also end up having to tidy up my studio a lot so that's I think and I sound it sounds crazy but actually tidying up my studio can be really inspiring because I find all sorts of things that have been sitting there that I thought oh yeah I remember that I started that and I didn't actually finish it oh Harry I'll, I'll carry on with that so um those are all sort of interesting things that they they are a little bit quirky I suppose um I think the tidying up the studio thing I do know other artists find that quite useful as well because again it's slowing down your brain and it's focusing on the creative side even though That's it's a very practical so so helpful uh, I love the the Enzo practice that you have enjoyed and I'm inspired to try that myself thank you um and the I I have something simple that I do when I start my day I'll just share it with you I have to shake my acrylic inks you know I'm sitting here and I'm I'm shaking my acrylic inks and it just triggers me to say, okay, this is where I am. And it, it's just fascinating to me how we all have different practice that yeah. get us into that flow state. And I'm curious, Fandy, if you have a particularly challenging uh, time in the, in the studio, what do you do to leave, you know, a piece of work that you are perhaps struggling through what do you do to end that day on a positive note with that piece that's an interesting question because it depends on the piece they all speak to you in a different way you get to a different phase I did one yesterday where I actually I'm probably about to put it I was going to put it onto my Instagram today where I walked out and I got to a point where I really loved it actually um and the problem was because I loved it so much at that point, I didn't want to touch it. It's just a study and it's on a sketch, a sheet of sketchbook. Um, and it was a bit of collage and ink and I wanted to add some more color. And I know it needs more color. Um, and I know it needs more because it was too minimal. But the problem was I loved the line and the color combination. It was collage and ink line. And I was thinking oh, I'll, I'll add the color in tomorrow as in today and the challenge was I just I you get to a point where you go I don't know what needs this needs next that's always the difficult bit it's the it's the thinking rather than the doing yeah. so where am I going with this and I that's when I walk away when I get to that point where it's like okay and then I will sometimes take a photograph and take it in with me um, to the house and sort of look at it in the evening and, and maybe have a look at it the next day. Uh, I came back in and I have done the next step, but it's still not quite there. I've stuck another piece of collage down, but I spent a bit of time taking that piece of paper, which I knew was going to go on the page. And I, because um, it had a line through it, the piece of paper. And so I played around with where it was going to go. And I took some photographs of it, putting it there, took a photograph. Took it the camera, the mobile phone is actually the best invention, event, invention for artists. Not because we take these beautiful, I mean, it's lovely to be able to take a beautiful photograph, but I take process photographs as I'm working. And a lot of the time I'll take photographs because it helps me to go away and think about it. I can look at them. I can turn them upside down. I can go, which one feels right? Because somehow when you're standing on the, in front of the piece of paper mm -hmm. and you put your, um, the next stage of collage paper on the page or something like that, and then it's difficult because it's like, well, it looks okay there. And it's interesting there, but which one do I want? And I find that if I take photographs of both of them and go away and do something else just for a few minutes and I come back and I look at those two photographs, one of them will be right. 
and the other one isn't. And I just know. So there are little techniques like that. So, you know, and sometimes a painting will take a long time to actually resolve itself. I had one that I was experimenting with. It's some years ago now. And I was experimenting with these little bottles with um, the fine tips. And I filled them with color, lots of different blues, actually, because I wanted to see what would happen if I just sprayed it onto a big sheet of paper. So I had them on my studio floor and I was spraying this paint and really letting rip with the with the watercolor. And it, it was fantastic fun. And then I got to the end and I went, OK, I have no idea what to do with this. It's got all these amazing blues. It's got lots of different splatter and shapes and, and colors. And, and I have no idea where this is going. And I stuck it on an easel. And literally, and and forgot about it. And, but every time I walked into the studio, it was there in my peripheral vision. And then I don't know, six months, a year later, ages, ages, so long, I walked in one day, and I just could see it. I knew exactly what this painting needed. And I finished it one session. I put it up on in, on on Facebook on my Facebook page, and within half an hour, a friend said, "Is that for sale? Can I have it, please?" And it was just that painting wasn't ready yet. I didn't have the vision in my head yet of what that needed to be. So sometimes the trick is to go and work on other things and just be comfortable to leave it and let it sit and do other things. And eventually it'll just go, you, you'll walk in and ping, the idea is there. Because the, the challenge, if you keep struggling through it, I think, is that you overwork it and it doesn't have that spontaneous flow that you need it to have. You need the theoretical knowledge to know what you what you're going to do. You know your color theory, your tonal values, your composition, all of that kind of stuff. But it's the the exact what is this painting going to be? Sometimes just takes a while. Such good advice, absolutely such good advice. And uh, right now, I I want to oh Sue, do you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. Um, yeah, you know, it's to me, you know, it's like work when you work, I multitask. So yes. in painting, you know, how, how do you manage that having several things going at the same time? You know, it's yeah, in, I mean, in your brain. I mean, yeah. Or, yeah. Well, no, I mean, sometimes to be fair, sometimes I'll walk in, I'll start a painting and I'll finish it in one session because mm -hmm. it just flows. And, you know, those are fantastic, but you can't always guarantee that's going to happen. So the way I deal with it is I'll often have work going in sketchbooks, which is my sort of, if I, that that's the sort of the default. If I'm working on a painting and I, I don't know what else to do, I'll work in a sketchbook um, and I can just close the sketchbook and put it away. And I just work on something completely different. But I usually have, I'm looking around my studio now, I've got one, two, three, four paintings on the go at the moment that are all in progress. And I'm okay with them sitting for a while because I, I have to feel it when I want to go back to working on it. So I'll, you know, they they are all in sight, which is the interesting thing, is that I very seldom put them away in a drawer because if I put them away in a drawer, I am not looking at them and they will get forgotten. So I tend to keep them in sight so that I am in the going into my subconscious I'm processing it's a bit like that thing where you get in the shower and that's when you have those amazing ideas <laughs> because you're not working hard to get that idea because if you're working hard you, I find I overthink it so it's the allowing those connections to be made in my subconscious while I'm doing something else and I think that's possibly why my sister always teases me and she said, I, every time I talk to you when you're in the studio, you tell me you're tidying up. What is it with your studio? <laughs> I go, <laughs> it is partly because I have piles of things. That, you know, if you could see my studio, I mean, if you, if, if you join my mentorship group, you probably will see at some point piles of things in the studio. But um, it is, I think it's that allowing your brain to make all those connections while you are busy doing something else. So I don't, actively process it I allow it to happen organically but I make sure that there are conditions in place that will help me to do the the yeah yeah and then Thank I will you. sometimes take out a painting and, and actively look at it and go you know am I ready to do some more work on this and if it doesn't feel right if it doesn't feel good I won't I I'm comfortable to leave it sitting until I'm happy to do it because I think otherwise it doesn't, it just, you, you're, 
in too much, there's too much risk that you're going to do the wrong thing, make the wrong decision, and then everything you've done up to that point is. It is easier with acrylic because you can paint over it, whereas watercolor is a bit more. <laughs> it seems like we're always so impatient and wanting to get things done, no matter what it is. So it's a it's skill to develop that ability to set it aside for a bit. Yeah, I mean, I work in layers a lot in watercolor because I think that's one of the things. I mean, you know, they say you can't correct a watercolor, and that's not true. You can. It's difficult, but you can correct it. You can change it. You can edit it. You can adapt it. But I, I'll show you something now that I've been working on for about three days so far because I just kind of had this idea. I was just telling, uh, we were talking earlier about the fact that it's spring here and our camellia, we've got a camellia in a pot just outside the door when I walk from the house to the studio. And it's just in full bloom at the moment. And I just decided I want to paint a huge camellia. So I've got this on the go, which is very loose. And um, there will be some more green on it. I just stuck that one on just to get the color, uh, the, 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 the resonance. And this camellia isn't, there's still all the darks have got to go in here. But it's it's just hanging around the studio. And I will do another layer on it today. And then it'll sit and either Monday, Sunday, tomorrow or Monday, I'll come in and do another layer. And that might have six different layers on it. But you've got to be careful because you've got to keep the translucence and the, and the vibrance. And if you do too much on it, and that's where it's valuable to just go, I'm just going to do a bit on this. And, you know, I'm going to do one layer, keep it light leave it to dry, walk away, because particularly with things like watercolor, I, I think acrylic as well, actually, the danger is if you don't let it dry, then you end up with muddy mess. So I've learned over the, over the years to actually be patient and walk away and do something different and let that properly dry before I do another layer. And the layering is actually the thing that is, it is one of the things that it's interesting because I've written articles on my website. And of course, you can see on the analytics, the two things, the two articles that are always and have been for years top of the list of the things that people read are the one on layering um, in watercolor and the one on texture in watercolor and those are two things that I do quite a lot creating texture and also doing the layering wonderful thank you yeah and great question Sue thank you um, so I, I want to talk about mentorship in general uh, for a couple minutes and then my goodness uh, we have been chatting. This has been delightful, and uh, I could talk. I could talk with you for a long time, Vandy, um, and all of us. Uh, so mentorship is uh, once a month. Uh, we will meet with Vandy um, live in a Zoom to uh, to spend two hours with her. Um, the first hour kind of looks generally like. Uh, reviewing and receiving critique and feedback on everyone's homework. And uh, then Vandy spending time uh, talking uh, talking with us about technique, about um, what we what she has identified that the group is interested in and how she can help all of us move forward as a group, but most importantly, individually in our pursuit, in our um, artistic journey uh, in, in um, watercolor. And uh, the, the, um, the powerful thing in my experience has been that it's live time with a master artist and it's not you know, a workshop that I zip off to on a Saturday morning and and get my head full of great ideas and then come back and say, oh, what did she say? How was that? And mentorship community is so powerful because you have that once a month, you have that live one-on-one -on -one time with the mentor. And you also have the other members of the mentorship group who are, I mean, there's so much wisdom in a group of eight artists. Plus, it's just a blast. <laughs> it's fun. And I, I enjoy it tremendously. And that's why I believe in mentorship so much. Um, so it's the, another thing that's been very important to me in my artist journey is a mentorship community is extremely safe. It is a place where you know, I can come in and 
and you'll be able to come in if you join us to express, um, you know, what your what your struggles are and what your your challenges have been, but also what your celebrations have been in the past month. And you know, we talk about that as as a group, and it is it's exciting and it's powerful. And then um, during the month, we have a live chat on Mastrius Chat for the members of the group. And Zandi is also a member of that chat group along with myself. And you can ask questions during the month. And I will do my best to make sure that those get relayed and, and we are helping one another throughout the month. Um, the, uh, oh goodness, I, something that I'm really excited that Vandy has uh, chosen to do with this mentorship group is for the first session, we, we want it to be all about meeting the members and and going over what we want to do as a group and what we would like to do individually. And to help with that process and to get the group moving, Vandy is, is going to ask each of us to come in with a an example of a painting that we like and a painting that we don't like so much, maybe even border on hate. But, and uh, I will have a, a folder that those go into um, in the Mastrius chat, and we will go over them right in the first meeting so that that is value added right out of the beginning of the group. And that's tremendous. Um, so, uh, goodness, kind of to wrap this up, um, <coughs> I I would, and this is a burning question of mine, Vandy, where would you go? And if you could be anywhere in the world, where would you go to create for a month to be an artist in residence, if you will? Um, I'll, I'll answer that in a second. There is a question in the chat, which we need to come oh. back to before we finish. Oh, thank um, you. But just, I just saw something pop in. Do you want to do that first and then I'll answer your question or should we do it the other way around? I don't you mind. You go, go right it. Okay. Go right ahead. So um, now this is an interesting question because I have actually done this. Um, my husband and I, we, we are very lucky because our sort of the, a lot of the work that he does and that I do outside of the, the, the painting and the photography uh, is all online so we can travel anywhere in the world and we decided um, I think it was 2017 and 2019 to go to the rainforest in Australia twice for two months at a time and so I painted um, and sketched and one of the most exciting paintings I did which I'm at the moment, my husband's saying I'm never allowed to sell it, and I have—I have to say—I I, think—I think I agree with him at the moment. Is that I was painting uh, probably an A1 big size, um, a full imperial, I suppose you would say, um, painting in the rainforest with a group of artists in Queensland, and it started raining, and we had to move the paintings very quickly. And there are raindrops. It was an acrylic, and there are raindrop marks all over this painting. And it just, and it was an abstract, it was an abstract impression of the, the rainforest and the, 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 the dense uh, undergrowth and the leaves and, and it's, it's fantastic, not because of, um, I mean, I like to think that I had a lot to do with it, but the main thing was those raindrops, you can see them on the paper and I'd never be able to recreate that again. And that every time I look at that it just evokes the rainforest and I can just smell that rain and I can remember that day so clearly and I think that is the beauty of painting in different places so I would probably go east I have to say um, I'd like to go to New Zealand so go even further east I think probably although I love the rainforest I think I've probably done because I've done two sessions there but I would love to actually, I tend to go to places where there, to paint nature rather than things like buildings and people and that sort of thing, because what interests me is the, you know, being in the middle of nature. I, there's nothing better than just standing in the middle of a forest and being completely quiet and just absorbing the atmosphere and then trying to translate that onto a piece of paper. It's, 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 yeah. it's 
challenging, but also quite exciting. So I would go east, but I think possibly um, New Zealand is one place I'd like to go. And then another place would be um, Vietnam, Cambodia, that part of the world, because I think it's really interesting because you've got not only the natural um, environment, but you've also got things like the, you know, the, the, uh, the, the ancient elements of man, man's evidence of being there. So the temples in Angkor Wat and that sort of thing are another place that we went to but we didn't I didn't actually sketch very much there but I took a lot of photographs and I would love to travel um through some of their river way their waterways and 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 see that part of the world so that's kind of on my bucket well, list. you are an adventurer and I'm excited for your mentorship group and I I do want to share my screen briefly to show um People who are joining us uh, next week when this is live on the, or this is streaming on the Mastrius um, YouTube um, channel. And oops, here we go. So to join uh, Vandy's mentorship group, um, it's on the Mastrius website. You can search under mentorship and select your mentor and you will find Vandy. It has a description of the group. Um, and also here's some art that, um, and Vandy, I wonder, is that rainforest piece in here? It isn't, although the little blue one on the left, actually there are two pieces from the rainforest and those are the blue on the left and the, the green and, and, and sort of mauve color um, yeah. on the white. Um, so the bottom two are both from the rainforest. I painted those in the rainforest and I wanted to create that. It was standing up high, looking out over the rainforest and there was a mist coming up from the rivers. Um, and mm. I wanted to create that feeling where you get, you can't see the, the, the bottom of the valley, but you can see the tops of the trees coming out. And those rainforest trees are the most remarkable shapes at the top. And so those two um, are from the rainforest. But, you know, you can paint close to home as well, because the one at the top in the middle is actually yes. the one with the red in the background and the tree. The, 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 that's a pruner's tree against an old red brick wall in the churchyard behind my house in the village. And I just was in there painting one day and I loved the combination of those colours, that red, that sort of purpley red of the pruner's tree leaves. It was a summer a summer's day and we were painting there. And then the, um, the sort of reddish brick, orangey red brick coming through behind it. It was just that amazing color combination. So that painting was about the color and the sort of shape of the trees that were all um, in in full in, in full um, leaf with the light filtering through. I I love it. Both those, those are they really speak to me certainly. Um, so here here's a bit more about uh, Vandy's expertise. The technical that she's um, discussed um, marketing because this is a group for emerging artists and you know this this can be where you can learn about getting into shows um, how to have an effective website um, marketing branding all the things that are important um, to us for getting our art into the world um, and then uh, joining the group is very easy. Uh, as And this is all one thing on the Mastria site. You scroll down and you find the Emerging Mentorship Group with Bandy and add it to your cart. And further, there is some more information. So um, this has been, uh, I'll stop sharing. And this has been such a great um morning for me afternoon for you and and i hope that um uh we this this conversation and discussion has inspired you to join us on your artistic journey as an emerging artist like me and so many people with the wonderful um master artist Vandy massey and I want to thank everyone for their time and look forward to seeing you in April. We start on uh, the first Tuesday, the first Tuesday of every month, which will yeah. be the first meeting will be April 2nd. And 
Um, I don't have the time zone things right in the top of my head, but they are on the um, on the mentorship page. And any last questions or thoughts, anyone? I think that, sorry, I think the timing, um, time zone, I know you'll need exact times, but uh, I had a, an Instagram live with um, Julie. Julie last night and it was 7.30 for me and I think it was sort of about lunchtime for her so I have a feeling yeah, it was 1.30 for her so six o'clock is likely to be sort of about 11 o'clock in the morning I think That's depending the... on where you are but if you're in 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 the same area as Judy if it, uh, Julie if it's if it's uh, North America depending yes. on which which slice <laughs> and and that is the the brilliance of zoom yes. that um, yeah. all of <laughs> All of yes. us internationally can meet on a platform and absolutely have a wonderful experience. And um, it, it works for this artist. And uh, I, I can't recommend it enough. It's yeah. really helped me tremendously. And I am totally jazzed to work with Vandy starting in April. I can't so, wait. It's going to be great. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, and that's, everyone. Well, thank you for joining. It's been lovely talking to, to you all. Oh, and thank you to have you, Vandy. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, it's a pleasure. I can go back and do some painting now. <laughs> or, yes. <laughs> Please do. We all can. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. I hope everybody gets some painting time in this weekend. Yes. Yeah. Great. Bye. Bye now. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>